So this begins our lesson on interest. And we're gonna begin with something called simple interest. Um, and simple interest is this idea that um, interest is the amount of money that it gets accumulated for an investment called the principal over a particular time, all right? So for example, we might have a savings account and in that savings account, we might accrue, which means to gain or accumulate interest because the bank will pay us a percentage of our starting, which we sometimes call our initial investment investment. Okay, and so like the idea here is is that the bank utilizes our money, all right, in order to like invest in other ventures, right, to give people loans, and they'll give a person a loan for five percent interest, and we will they will give us three percent back, and so that two percent difference is what they consider their profit, and that's what the bank gets is a profit. So they'll pay us interest, right, okay, and they'll charge somebody that they give a loan to interest, right. And so what we're gonna look at is we're gonna look at how do we calculate those that the, that kind of, those kind of numbers, right? One from the perspective of us, where we're getting interest for putting money into a bank account, or let's, let's say for example, from the perspective of the bank, where they're actually taking um, interest from somebody that they give a loan to, okay? So let's take a look at an example. A bank may pay us 1.5% on, on an investment per year. The simplest way to calculate this is with something called simple interest. So let's suppose that we put initially $3,000 in. How much will we have after one year? So if we think about this, we're just gonna have a single year and we notice that this thing here is, our investment is per year. So we got one year and we have per year, okay? And since we're looking at our investment per year, we have something called an annual, annual meaning per year, annual percentage rate. So you know that you're looking at it per year because in Latin, uh, a year is called per annum, right? And annual means per year. Annual percentage rate, and so our annual percentage rate in this case is 1.5%, which we're actually gonna turn into a decimal because we're gonna need a decimal in order to do uh, any kind of math. We can't really do de uh, math with percentages. And the way that simple interest works is our interest is gonna equal our P naught. Now, our P naught, and this is one of those things with finance can, that can sometimes be a little bit tricky, is P naught is called our initial investment or our initial principal, right? So when we talk about that, we're gonna have an initial principal, that's the initial investment. That's how much we put in. And so the amount of interest that we have is I, okay? And we're gonna have R, that's gonna be our rate. Now in this case, we've got an annual percentage rate, all right? But in sometimes we're gonna know a monthly rate, sometimes we'll know a daily rate, okay? This is gonna be the rate as stated in the problem. And in math, other than X and Y, simply the most common variable is gonna be T, and T stands for time. One of the things that we wanna make sure that we have is we have our time in terms of the same amount as our rate. Okay, so if our rate is in terms of years, our time T is gonna to have to be in terms of years. All right, uh, and it's really important, and that's one of those conversions that we're just gonna to have to make, but it's not too difficult. In general, uh, we may have a rate that looks like uh, years would be one to one. If we were looking at months, we might have to multiply by 12, okay, or divide by 12, depending upon the particulars of the question that we're looking at, days, 365 for every one year. Um, a week, so you could look at 52 weeks for every one year. And that's pretty safe, unless we have what's called uh, a banker's year, which is at 360, and I did a, a video on that earlier, okay? So our interest, I, we're gonna write this equation, I is gonna equal our principal times our rate, okay? And the reason why it's principal times rate is because we're only looking at one year and our investment is per year. Okay, so that's gonna end up equaling 3,000, in this case, times 0 0.015. All right, so we take 3,000 times 0 0.015. Put that in our calculator and we end up with $45. And so for one year's of investment in the bank, for $3,000, we end up making 45 bucks. Okay, on 1.5% interest. Well, you're like, oh, that's not very big, but well, the fact of the matter is you didn't have to do anything. You just had to put your money there and not do anything else with it, okay? And so that's how interest works, right? It's basically 
multiplication. Um, and one of the challenges of working with finance, working with interest, is this part right here, where we identify inside of our problem what are the values uh, that we have, the information that we ha that we have, and what do they represent in terms of the equations that we're going to end up using, right? And then we just basically plug them into the equations. Okay. So this is called simple interest, and this is one-time simple interest. That is, say for example, I use something called a certificate of deposit. They say, look, after one year, you keep the money in for a year, you can't touch it, and we'll give you 1.5%, right? And so at the end of the year, they give you $45 along with your $3,000, all right? And so let's take a look at that problem too. Let's say for example, again, we have a CD, and the question that we wanna know is, what amount of money will we have after one year. So now what I want to think about is I want to think, okay, well, I got this amount of interest, $45, all right? And you might think to yourself, wait a second, I put in $3,000 and they're giving me back 45 bucks. Well, no, that's not how interest works. How interest works is we're gonna take the amount that you put in initially, $3,000, and we're gonna to add to that the interest, okay? So we'll talk about this as the amount, right? A equals the amount. And here's what it's gonna be. A, our amount, um, amount after time t, okay? A is gonna equal simply I plus P naught. So it's gonna be my initial amount, okay, um, P naught plus interest, right? So it's gonna be the interest plus the initial amount. And when it comes to working with interest and thinking about interest, that's basically all we're ever doing. We're taking the interest plus whatever principle that we put in. It just gets more complicated as we get into more complicated kind of like um, complicated situations, right? If we're say, for example, we're what we call compounding over longer periods of time, or if we have you know different interest rates, or what we're doing is we're putting in money, like we're making a payment over time, okay? So this amount over time T, if we look at the question that we've got here, we put in our amount A of T, okay, or um, A of one year, is gonna equal, it's the $45 that we had plus $3,000. So what we end up with is $3,045. And that's the amount that we'll have in say our certificate of deposit after one year. We take the interest plus the principal, that's actually how much you end up getting after one year. All right, and it's really like, that's all it is. So when we see, what we, you'll see is you'll see an equation that looks like this. And I'm gonna do a little bit of algebra, but I think you guys can handle it, okay? I've got A of T, right, is gonna equal my interest, I of T plus P naught, okay? Now this interest, we have it, it's right up here. So interest is gonna equal P naught times R, okay? plus and we'll add p naught. And then what we do is we just do a little algebra where we, we factor out the p naught. I'm gonna factor out my principal and it's just then gonna be one plus r. So it'll be p naught times one plus r. And that's the interest. And you can actually see that this is this would in fact work, right? So if I wanted to know after one year, a of one, okay, I'm gonna get, um, <clears throat> excuse me, 3,000 times one plus 0 0.015, and take a minute to put that into your calculator. That's gonna be 3,000 times 1.015, and that you'll see is $3,045. So we can actually simplify this. We don't have to actually find the interest at the beginning and then add to it the principal. We could actually utilize this single equation, right? This one right here. If we are doing, once again, one time simple interest. So there's our one time simple interest. What if we had a more complicated question? What if I wanted to figure out how much interest or the amount of money that I would have after five years? Suppose that I wanna figure out how much I would have in a five year CD if I got 1.5% interest every year for five years and I put $3,000 in my account initially. Now again, we're gonna talk about simple interest. So when we talk about simple interest, and this is important, simple interest,
gives us interest only on our, our, our initial principal. Gives us interest only on our initial principal. We're going to look at something called compound interest in just a little bit. And what happens with compound interest is that every single year, I end up having a new amount of money or every single day I end up having a new amount of money, right? They add the interest in. And if you think about it, what ends up happening is, is that I end up with more interest uh, or I, after that first year because I have a bigger principal. Bigger principal gives me bigger interest every single time. And so that's actually how compounding interest works. In our case, for us, for our case right now, we're just looking at simple interest. And so every year, it's just gonna be $3,000 again. All right, they're not gonna actually say, for example, give us more money at the end of the first year in order to calculate our interest on that more money. All right, so what we have here is we actually have a problem, uh, um, an equation that will allow us to do this. So our amount of money, well, let's first start out with the amount of in interest. So I've got I of T, okay, is gonna equal, and this is gonna be P naught, right, R times T. And remember again, and this is super important, P naught equals the principal, that's the initial amount of money that I have put in, R equals the rate, and T equals the amount of time. So in our problem, we're gonna call this, and this is some functional notation, and if you're reading the book or you're looking at uh, uh, some videos, you may see this. This is I of, and in this case, it's gonna be five. And that's because T is five. So notice that whenever I have the T, I'm going to plug in uh, whatever value that I have in here inside of the parentheses is gonna be plugged in for T. P naught, my principal is my initial amount, so that's gonna be 3,000 times my rate is gonna be 0 0.015, and now my time in this case is gonna be five, right? I'm gonna have I of five. So what that gives me is I'm gonna get 3,000 times 0 0.015 times five, and go ahead and put it in your calculator, and you're gonna get $225. Not coincidentally, $225 is equal to five times 45, okay? So remember that 45 was how much I was getting every year, and since we're doing simple interest, we just multiply that by the number of years. That's all that's happening, okay? Um, and that's how simple interest works. Principle remains the same, and we just add up interest on that initial principle, right? No changes in how much is in the account until the, basically the very end, right? So it's like, okay, well, we'll give you 1.5% on $3,000 for five years. Now, the amount of money, call it A of T, is gonna again be equal to, it'll be the principal, P naught, plus, again, our I of T. And that's exactly the same as what it was initially, right, when we looked at uh, simple interest for when we just had the one-time occurrence. So if I look at this, this is P naught, and I'm gonna plug in my P naught RT, okay, just a little bit of algebra. You can always just utilize the equation if you want to. I'm just doing this um, so you can see that they're related. So this is my principal plus my interest. So that's gonna be P naught, and I'm gonna factor out the P naught, and it's gonna be one plus RT, okay? One of the things that I know, just like before, if I plug this in, this is 3,000 plus 225. So that's gonna give me $3,225, and that's how much I'll have after four, five years. Okay, well, I can also utilize this equation right here. So I can actually bypass finding the interest first and then adding it to the principal just by utilizing this equation. So A of T, so now this is gonna be A of five. Remember that our principal P naught is 3000 times one plus my rate 0 0.015. Okay, that's 1.5% written as a, a decimal times five, okay. So this is gonna end up being 3,000. And if you remember your order of operations, it'll be one plus 0 .05, 0 0.075, excuse me, because I just multiplied these two together. And this will equal 3,000 times 1.075, and that'll end up equaling
Go ahead and put it in your calculator, 3,225. And there it is. And that is the amount that we have after five years using simple interest. Okay? So on the one hand, we can think about if we have an initial amount, that is, is just one year's worth of interest accrued for a one-year rate. Okay, you got one year, one year rate, all right? How much will you actually end up getting? Well, that's gonna be um, A of our initial T, and our T ends up here being one, right? In that case, T ends up being one, and so we end up with the same exact equation just for one year. Oftentimes, I don't even think about the first one, the first equation. I just utilize A of T, my amount, right, after an amount of time T, or I use I of T, which is my interest, depending upon what people ask me for, okay? So if I'm being asked for the amount of interest, I'll use I of T. And if I'm looking for the amount, total amount that I have left over at the end, I'm gonna use A of T. So let's kind of review that for just a moment. So let's look at our, our two equations that we have here. One, we have I of T, and that's the amount of interest that is left after a time T for a given principal P naught. And we've got I of T is gonna equal P naught times R times T. And that's the interest. So that's the amount of money that we get in addition, that the bank is gonna give us in addition to our initial principal. Okay, remember P naught is the principal, the initial principal, R is the rate and T is the time and we should say that it's in terms of the same time from the rate. And we're going to look at a, a problem in which we kind of get get something where it's not just um, uh, where we're going to get something where the time that we're measuring is different from the time in which our rate is stated. All right, so now A of T, in terms of simple interest, is gonna equal P naught times one plus RT, okay? Again, R is the same value that we had before. It's the rate in terms of the same time from our, uh, from our rate, uh, excuse me, it's our rate times the time in terms of the same time from the rate. And P naught is our initial principal. And all this is saying is, we're gonna add the principal, right? The initial amount, plus our interest, okay? And we just actually put it all together inside of a single pro, uh, single equation, okay? We take the interest plus the, the principal, we get the amount that we have at the end. So let's ask the question, what if I had a rate and the rate and the time units don't match or if my time is not in terms of years, right? So let's say for example, I have a loan and it has a simple interest rate of 6% per year. That means that its annual percentage rate or its APR is 6%. The initial principal of the loan was $1,500. How much interest would be owed on the loan after nine months? So here's the question. Like, it's not a full year, so I'm not gonna own, owe 6%. I'm gonna owe actually less than 6%. But the question is how much less am I gonna actually owe, okay? And there are a couple of different ways that we can do this. What we can do is we can actually divide our year into 12 months, all right, and then multiply by the number of months, okay? So we can take, one of the things that we can do is we can change our APR, which is 6% in this case, to the monthly interest. For us to do that, what we're gonna to need to do, and this is exactly like the conversions that we've done before, you'll take 0 0.06 and you'll divide it by 12, all right? So this is the monthly rate because what we're looking at is we're looking at simple interest. So we have the monthly rate of 0 0.06 divided by 12, okay? Which ends up being 0 0.005. And so one of the things that we can do is we can utilize this as, we'll let this be R. This is R now. And now, but notice, since it's a monthly rate, if that's R now, then T is in terms of months. So that's one option that we have. We can change our 
uh, annual rate into a monthly rate by dividing by 12, okay, then our t is in terms of months. And so my a of t is going to equal my principal, okay, or actually, excuse me, we're looking at interest. So my i of t is going to equal my principal, so 1,500 times my rate now, which is 0 0.005, okay, times 9 for the 9 months. So that's one option. We'll call that option 1. On the other hand, we could actually go in and we could utilize a different conversion. We could keep the yearly rate of 0 0.06, okay? And then we convert our time into years. So we'll convert our time into years. So our t would now equal 9 divided by 12. 9 divided by 12 which equals 0.75. So that's three quarters of a year, right? So in this case, you'll notice we have a yearly rate and we actually have 0.75 years. And this is really important for understanding interest just in general, is, is that in order for us to actually utilize an equation, the amount of time and the rate, okay, have to have the same, basically, uh, they have to be converted into the same um, uh, time units. All right, so if we have a monthly rate, we'll be calculating in terms of months. If we have a yearly rate, then we'll be calculating in terms of years. If we don't do that, we're going to end up with the wrong answers. Okay, we're going to end up at either calculating too much interest or too little interest. So this I of T now is going to equal 1500 times 0 0.06, that's my yearly rate, times 0 0.75. And you can go in and actually calculate both of them. Let's take a second and do that. When you do both equations, what do you end up with? We end up with 67.5. We end up with 67.5. What if I wanted to figure out how much that we actually had in the account after a single year? So our A of T, right? So this is our interest. What about A of T? We're going to do the same exact thing with our times. So A of T, we'll have option number one, where what we do is we change the rate. A of T is going to equal 1,500 um, 1, times 1 plus, in this case, 0 0.005, that's our 0 0.06 divided by 12, times 9, okay? And we'll see that that's 1,567.50. Or, we have option 2, which is where we change our year, or our months into years. So A of T is going to equal 1,500 times 1 plus... 0.06, that's my rate, because it's annually times three quarters of a year now. And that'll still be $1,567.50. Same deal. So when there is a difference in our rate in terms of its time and the amount of time that we're given, what we've got to do is we've got to do a conversion. Either we're going to divide our rate by whatever that conversion factor is. In this case, the conversion factor is 12 because it's months. Or what we'll have to do is we'll have to um, change our time into uh, the same units as our rate. Okay, let's take a look at another example just to do one um, so that you can see another example of motion. Okay, so let's suppose that we have an account that is given 2% per month in simple interest. You place $5,000 in the account and you let it sit for five years. How much money? Uh, how much money would you have in the have total after five years? Okay, we'll just remove that extra wood. So, if I think about this, we'll notice that I'm calculating here in terms of years, but my interest is in terms of months. So the time on my interest is different from the time on my time. All right. So what I need to do is I need to calculate either one the interest or um, the number of years in terms of one of the other. So how about this? What I'm going to do is I'm going to transfer my years into months. So five years will equal 12 months. Will equal 12 times five months, excuse me. 12 times five, which equals 60 months. So I'm going to accrue my simple interest for 60 times over my five years. 
Not five times, I'm gonna do it 60 times, right? Because I'm gonna be accruing simple interest every single month. This is a good deal for me, right? If you think about it, getting interest 60 times is much better than getting interest five times, all right? That's why it's so important to pay attention to these things. So my A of T, I'm gonna use my equ equation, A of T is gonna equal my principal, 5,000, times one plus, and my interest rate is in months, 0 0.02, and my time now is also in terms of months. And so now I can do my calculation. That's 5,000, okay, times one plus, and 0 0.02 times 60 is gonna end up equaling, one point two so we'll take five thousand times and this will be two point two all right two point two times five thousand so the amount of money that I'll have in the account will end up being eleven thousand dollars pretty solid more than doubled inside of that five years that's a great rate of interest by the way just a ridiculously good rate of interest for two percent it's awesome all right so that's what we're gonna be thinking about when we're doing simple interest. The biggest challenge here, one, is to identify what your variables mean, and then also to convert your rates into the time units that you'll be using for um, uh, your time, or to change your time units into the values for your rate units, okay? So like I said before, like in this case, right, we need to change either our months into years or our years into months, all right? so. That completes the lesson, all right? We've got a couple of equations that we're gonna use. The real challenge here is to figure out when you're gonna use them. Are you looking for interest? Are you looking for the amount of money that's in there? We also wanna notice that here, we're only looking at things that have to do with simple interest, okay? And we need to make sure that our rates and our times are actually equal to one another, or they have the same units, right? We need to get them in terms of the same units. This completes the lesson.